what I'm looking at today is shouldn't take us very long um, so I've had a couple of people asking how you've seen in the tutorial scenarios where it says and this is the control for the regulator and the camera pans down to the regulator um, and I've also related to that you can also make the HUD glow on different controls so I'm just going to show you how to do those two it's very easy deferred event scourger are really good they're really good Why not just have an empty TS for tutorials? I have got one, Dave. The problem is, if I ever do want DLC or put a bit of variety in what I'm doing, I then have to go and beg codes from um, Steve and people, and it just gets tiresome, frankly. Um, right. So, uh, around here, I'm just going to use the stuff that came in this pack. Class 47 uh, BR Blue. and <clears throat> then I'm going to put a player icon on it and then I'm going to save it just because I'm paranoid after yesterday right so uh, I am going to uh, th everything I'm showing you today is just on the um, scripting um, so let's um, uh, go into here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the train uh, a simple daft instruction let's find where we are there we are and I'm just gonna to say to go forward to here so I'm gonna say go forward this is much the same as the train spotting scenario because I don't actually want the player train to move I just want to uh, set some stuff up so that it works so I am going to do this with trigger instructions so I'm gonna put a trigger instruction in and I'm just gonna say uh, start so that's done all of that. That's effectively set the player up because I'm not going to do much more than that. We'll add some more trigger instructions as we want to do more steps to the sequence. You do the script button and you hit open folder and um, then I switch to the uh, the other camera, the other screen. I put the monitor on. Hold on. So if I now oops, um, put that one on, you should now see that. Hopefully that's reasonably sizably big enough to see. Oh, what a load of waffle. Right, anyway, um, we now go right click new text document and we say scenario script.lua. The important thing to remember is that it's not .txt. If that's still, when you're finished, if that says text document, it's not going to work, yeah, because it still thinks it's .text. Delete that. When you're ready, it will say lua file. If it does not say lua file, it will not work. So if you if it says text document but it only says dot lua over here, what it means is that under here you have file name extensions not ticked. Yeah? So like scenario properties. If I was to now create a new file called um uh Fred dot lua, you'll notice it says Fred dot lua, but it says text document still. <laughs> Scary. Alright, click view, tick the file name extensions. Ah, it's dot txt cunning. Right. Um, so that's that's one common fault um, with the uh, with what people do. If they say that they're having problems and it won't run, won't run the script, then um, that's generally the, one of the first things that goes wrong. Um, if you now right-click, open it up in the uh, Notepad. Um, so what I'm going to do now is um, paste in some stuff so the first bit I'm going to paste in is exactly what I had in the previous scenario um, that we did so these bits are all the constants that came from um, the way original blog post I put up and this is my two functions which make my func my um, structure a little bit tidier um, now we did uh, start was what the, we put up there so we need uh, to create function on event start now notice I've got a capital S that's because I put it as a capital S up here so if I just close that a minute you'll notice it's got a capital S that's the reason for that so in here I am going to put this syscall which is Windows Manager colon highlight control regulator 50 what that will do is it will highlight the HUD control which is the regulator it will highlight it for five seconds and ignore that because that's never actually been implemented that was originally intended to be some sort of the style of highlight but never actually 
um, that never got done. So that uh, third parameter is unused at this point, and that five is the number of seconds you want it to start highlighting. This is where it flashes it with a red uh, red border. So we can just try that now. So if I save that and come in here, reload, compile, and then I come out and I save and I hit play. You know what I've done? <laughs> oh, you dipstick. Um, let me replay that and then press edit. I'm using uh, Notepad. Notepad++ is what I'm using. Just Google it. So someone asked earlier on, why does my train keep running off when, without me? And I've just done it. Like I said, I do it every single time I make a scenario. No, this even seems this isn't how uh, rolling starts um, the works. I'm going to do that another time. This is how these little tu tutorial highlight functions work. <sighs> Which will be much easier to demonstrate once I actually uh, make it a player train and not an AI train. So I'm going to press Control, Edit, go into Scenario Edit Mode. <sighs> there we go. Right, now, timetable mode. What you do is the player service, you click the driver, it needs this icon clicking. Boom, that is now a player service. Player consist. Not, and it will now for, look, wait for me to drive it. Wait for me to drive it. Now I'm also going to double click that, which is my scenario thing, and this thing forces it into the cab view when the scenario starts, not flying around. Um, BNSF, I, I'm doing the, um, that, that's basically what I'm doing at the moment. So if I now press play, save that, and we run it, you see that it's uh, it's showing it up. That's, so that's doing that red highlight. Um, it doesn't really work on the mini HUD, it only really works on the full HUD. Um, right, so, what do we do now? So let's go back into the editor. So, what I'm going to do now is... Um, not that one, where's the other one gone? There it is. So in here, I'm going to have another event, and we'll call it in a minute when it's loaded. So on... Uh, no, I'm not going to do another event. What I'm going to do here is, in here, I'm going to make a zoom to the uh, the control. So I'm going to add another syscall in here, um, which is scenario manager colon look at control regulator, and then 550.8. So let me get my book out and remind myself which one's which. Um... Where is look at control? There it is. So this is the lerp time and the duration. So this is, um, so that's the control name. That is um, how long it will take to zoom in to it um, and f turn and focus it. The next number is how long until effectively once it's done it until the command exits. And then this is the field of view. So do you want it to zoom in or stay zoomed out or whatever? You can play with that number to get the effect that you want. So if I now save that, if I come back up here to the game and reload, double check we've got the change that we put in, compile, and then um, if I run it, now when the scenario starts, it starts looking at something... Oh, of course, I've got track IR on. So that's not going to help at all. Um, let me come out of the game. I'll put it back on uh, changing route. Let me come out of the game and turn track IR off. Because uh, the, the look control just doesn't work if you've got track IR on. Strangely enough. It's not strange at all. It's a, pretty much exactly the right thing. Let me turn track IR off. Fire the game back up. Tyson is cool. What blog post do you want to listen to? Cheers, Tyron One. Just waiting for the game to come back up. And I shall be with you. Right, so track IR is now not there. Let me get back into the editor. Tutorial. 
tutorial stuff, edits. Hey, bass, uh, bassist Ben, bassist Ben, bassist Ben. Uh, welcome to the stream. As soon as the game is just finished loading my, me into the editor here, I'll put it back on so you can see it. How do you upload all of your DLC from one train sim to another? I'm not sure what you mean, train boy. If it's DLC, it should just automatically download when you install train sim on another machine. Right, we're in the editor. Let me uh, bring the screen back. Hello. Um, Amtrak, no, I shut it down because Track IR is running and that overrides the uh, the camera looking function that we're doing at the moment. So if I now run this scenario... Now you can see that the camera is looking down at the regulator control as I've instructed it to. And we've got the highlight down there. But it stays looking at it. So let's try and fix that while we're doing now. So if I come back to here. And bring up the script again. So what I'm going to do now is at some point I'm going to do on event... Um, uh, reverser and we're going to look at the reverser let's do the uh, reverser put reverser in there and let's make this one a little bit faster right so that's on event reverser so if I go in here and after start, so we are going to take five seconds to zoom in. Look at it for five seconds. So we want ten seconds later to do. Now you could do this with a deferred event as well, um, but ten seconds later, I'm going to do reverser. We just set that reverser event up, reload, make sure we've got the changes. We do compile. Now, if I run the scenario. It zooms in on the control, and then after um, 10 seconds, it will swing round. It highlights the re reverser, and it, hi it zoomed in on this control. So we can now swing around. That's it. Once the time's over, we're good to go. Right, so that's switched from one control to another control. Um, so now I come back in the editor again, and now let's reset the view. So to reset the view, We'll do another function uh, on event reset, and we will put in there. So this is very much a here's one I made earlier. You may have guessed this. Um, so this is scenario manager restore camera to default, and then two is how long will it take to move the camera back to the right place again. Uh, Amtrak 109. Uh, these are internal. So things like the word regulator, they're an internal constant. You have to use exactly the ones that are not that are documented. Um, right. So if I look at that, that's um, going to do that. So that's called reset. So we now need to add that to here. So let's add another event. Yeah, that one. At twin another ten seconds, which is uh, reset. And run that. So hopefully. Hopefully. Oh, I didn't reload and compile the scenario script. Let's have a look see if this works. Fly 4590. Well, this is quite advanced stuff because I'm using the scripting. Can you make a message pop up during the camera movement? You could put the message box up and then do the camera movement, but I would probably err on the side of recommending that you focus the player on looking at one thing at a time. Right, so I need to... We can pile and reload that script. So we set reset. Oops, don't need another one of them. That's what I want. If I now reload one event reset. 
Restore camera to default. Yeah, compile. Now try it. Just making the scenario sort of drive trains around is is, is easy enough. Flight forty five ninety. This is advanced stuff where you need scripting to help you. And there you go. Camera restores back to where it was. So that's how those functions work on the tutorial. That was what I was asked to show. That's how they work. Um, forty five ninety. If you want to go and have a look at how um, the um, that the basic stuff for making scenarios is done, um, which is done without any scripting whatsoever, um, then I've got videos on YouTube about that. Altering speed limits, let me just show you how to do that real quick, because it's dead easy. If I come down here and mark this section of the line up, so you go into the scenario mode, <coughs> I hope that explains how you use those two, the highlight control, look at control and restore camera to default functions. So I hope that answers that question. So in here if I was to go use the mark function, the select function, mark an area, uh, and then in here you can change the speed limits and you can do all sorts of different things. So I can make that 10 miles an hour for uh, primary speed limit and five miles an hour for secondary speed limit. So that's how you do a temporary speed restriction that then would actually, if it was a career scenario, you'd actually start losing points if you went too fast through it. So. And make them appear on the HUD. So there's two things. You either need to be able to put mile posts in. I don't know if there's any in here. Uh... Not mile posts, speed posts. Yeah, I don't know is the short answer. If you can get speed posts in scenarios. Um, the other thing is some routes, what they do is um, they will let the some routes are set to actually show all speeds regardless of speed posts, in which case this will show up on the HUD. If it's not set to and it's set to require the speed posts, then uh, you can't do it, I don't think, because the uh, you need the uh, things on there. So what I would do actually is I would um, create a marker um, so if you press the space bar then it changes the track to show properties um, and you can see so this is directionality so you can see these are this is which direction the lines are going in and then this one you can see this is where we put our different speeds in here um, so what I would do there is I would just place a, uh, a destination marker on here um, and move that up there and then just name that um, as something like TSR 10 MPH and then that would show up on the HUD as a temporary speed restriction of 10 miles per hour you don't always need speed posts couple up on hours in root properties XML you can change as a flag so that it will ignore the speed posts and always show you all of the signs all of the speeds based on the track properties I think it's in root properties XML it's a toggle but that's how I do it in a scenario. I would change the speed limit, put a marker on there, and then I would say go via that marker as an instruction, and then it would show up on the um, on the mini HUD at the bottom. Okey doke. Right, that's that for uh, the uh, tutorial. It's time for my wrists and my arm to be completely destroyed, and let's do the pump cart challenge. I'm also going to make a cup of tea, so I'll be back in just a second once the noise has stopped. <laughs> 